ating series. I am VJ, the Communications and Engagement Manager of PPSA, and I will be your host for this afternoon session. To share briefly, and for those who are new here, PPSA is a multi-stakeholder partnership platform for agriculture that was catalyzed by Grow Asia and the Philippine Department of Agriculture to convene different stakeholders in sharing best practices and discuss various issues in agriculture and strategies for collective action. We are supported and funded by the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Thank you, VJ, and good afternoon, everyone. First of all, thank you so much for attending this webinar session. Your participation today and inputs to the discussions later during the question and answer and open forum would greatly help us chart a new direction for the PPSA Vegetables Working Group and initiate in-depth knowledge exchanges and collaborations. As we move forward, what we really want to do is to continuously innovate how we become of service to you as your partnership platform and find ways to create an enabling environment that allows our smallholder farmers and fisher folk to grow. So as we join the celebration of the World Food Day, which is happening tomorrow, we align our efforts with the theme, Grow, Nourish, Sustain, Together. Thus, the session today will share some projects and initiatives from a various organizations represented by three of our esteemed speakers on promoting vegetable consumption here and abroad, the challenges, the challenges they face, and also the corresponding um, responses given the pandemic. The presentations will be followed by a question and answer portion. Lastly, we will have the open forum. So we request your uh, participation and active engagement as we gather inputs on areas for multi-stakeholder partnerships, considering of course our um, work as PPSA and through Asia. Again, many, many thanks for allocating your time for this webinar session. We, find, we hope that you find this session useful and engaging, and more importantly, we hope we can find ways to work together towards advancing a healthier and food-wise Filipino nation. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Over to you, VJ. Uh, thank you so much for that, Ami. Okay, uh, now a number of studies show that high cost of fruits and vegetables, high spoilage of this produce, and lack of information on their benefits are open, often cited as reasons why Filipinos consume vegetables less. And there we have the zero hunger goal of the sustainable development goals that we need to achieve by 2030. To enlighten us about these reasons and among other issues, uh, we invited Dr. Imelda Angeles Agdepa uh, he's, she is the currently the she is currently the OIC director at the Department of Science and Technology, Food and Nutrition Research Institute. She is the principal investigator of numerous community trials. She has published several papers in peer-reviewed international journals and has been invited as paper presenter either oral or in post poster form in various international and national fora. She has been awarded as one of the ten leaders in nutrition by the Nutritionist Dietitians Association of the Philippines and received a citation award from the Professional Regulations Commission of the Philippines. Uh, Dr. Agdepa has a Master's in Science in Nutrition from the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education for Tropical Medicine, Regional Center for Community Nutrition, uh, University of Indonesia, and a PhD in Nutrition from the same university. Uh, guests, please welcome Dr. Imelda Angeles Agdepa. Over to you, Doc. Yes, uh, good afternoon to all our uh, partners from PPSA, from Grow Asia, from East West Seeds, and other government, private, and uh, uh, non government organizations. Um, a pleasant afternoon to all of us. Uh, allow me to say to you that this presentation is actually mostly coming from our. National Nutrition Survey. So permission to use the screen, please. So uh, my presentation uh, is actually promoting uh, vegetable consumption. So um, the, the Food and Nutrition Research Institute is um, the, research, the premier research development institute of the government in food and nutrition and other SNP services. 
So it is mandated to undertake the researches and define the nutritional status of the population or the Filipinos. And then we develop and recommend policy options and strategies or programs. And uh, we actually also diffuse or transfer this knowledge and technologies to the population. So the, uh, the presentation track uh, that I will have today is to give you an overview of the agri uh, nutrition and agri food situation and then try to link the food and nutrition concepts to current pandemic situation. And then uh, I will present to you in brief what are the different FNR activities to promote nutrition vegetable intake recommendation and co to consumption, and then give you the summary. So for the overview, as I have told you, the Food and Nutrition Research Institute conducts the expanded national nutrition survey. And uh, starting in 2018, we had 40 provinces already finished, and in 2019, only 39 provinces were done. However, in 2020, uh, we did not push through with it. It's just because of the pandemic. And hopefully, we can actually cover the remaining number of uh, provinces by um, 2021. So is food a need or a want? No. So eating well is not as simple as it seems. No. So this is quite uh, difficult because you can see here that based on our survey, mean one day household food intake by food groups and percent contribution to the total intake of Filipinos, you can see here that cereals and cereal products contributed about 39% of the day's uh, food, uh, household food intake. And trying to look at um, vegetable consumption, we have only 15% contributing to that day's uh, household food intake. And uh, through the years, if you can see from 1978 down to 2018, uh, there is really a, a declining uh, amount of uh, vegetable consumption, no? uh, of, of uh, energy intake. And uh, for those households trying to actually meet the 100% of the requirement, you can see here that only 24.2% has met the 100% recommendation for energy. And uh, this is actually, there was actually a decline from the 2015 data. Mm -hmm. And that means to say in 2015, we were already at 31% meeting, no? However, in 2018, it has decreased to 24% of the households only meeting the 100% recommended energy intake. And um, in here, the consumption uh, of uh, vegetables and fruits, it's really very disappointing. You can see that there is a downtrend. Coming from uh, our fruits, there is a decline in 2018, see, from 104 down to 41 grams no, in 2018. The same holds true with the, our vegetable consumption. And trying to look at, at the individual level by uh, age groups, you can see our young our school children, they only have uh, about 3.4% aged 10 to 12 years old is actually having a vegetable consumption of uh, 3.5, 3.4% uh, or the 18 grams. The requirement of our WHO for all these age groups is actually 400 grams. And uh, this holds true with the other different population groups. It is quite alarming that uh, most, uh, actually all, all of the population age groups are not actually meeting our fruit and vegetable requirement. Now, vegetable yield in the Philippines, now, and um, this is the Southeast Asia and the World Bank by kilogram per hectare from 2014 to 2018. You can see here the Philippines is a dark, dark green. Sorry. So you can see that the Philippines has the lowest. No? This is the Philippines, and this is the Southeast Asia, and this is the world. And the percentage, um, despite of very low uh, uh, production, you can see here that we still have also a very high uh, losses. And uh, you can see the vegetables uh, here 
in the uh, year two, uh, 2017, we have 5.1% percent, uh, percent loss. No? How much more with our vegetables? It has about um, 12%. And uh, we have also losses, but if you try to look at, this is very, very uh, disappointing to see that uh, despite of those uh, facts, we still, we, we really have, to, uh, we can see, you know, a, um, a uh, moderate or severely food insecure population. In 2018, well, uh, 2019, we saw about 39% of our population are suffering from uh, moderate food insecurity and uh, about 5.12% are suffering from food insecurity. Now, uh, the plate waste. So we have food insecurity, but we incur plate waste. So uh, for um, vegetables, we have 7.2 grams of plate waste. And most of the plate waste is actually coming from cereals and cereal products. And um, what's the result? You can see here, because of food insecurity and low production, food accessibility, and so on, you can see here that there is really a problem of uh, undernutrition and also overnutrition. So underweight, and overweight are there. And the prevalence of vitamin A deficiency is also present among our uh, under five children. And of course, um, you cannot really have uh, to, to you are also bothered to see that uh, there is hypertension in the population, mainly about 90% or 90% of our population, aged up 20 years and over, is suffering from hypertension. And if we try to link the food and nutrition concepts to the current pandemic situation, you can see here that if we say food, food is what people eat and drink to stay alive, develop, and uh, function healthily. And the human body is not able to produce essential nutrients. Thus, people have to consume food. Now, if we take into consideration the science of nutrition, it comes from food that is responsible for giving energy, building and repairing body tissues, and regulating body processes. Now, all foods contain one or more nutrients in varying amounts, so no single food provides all the nutrients needed for normal function. This is, the, this is why we always promote consume a variety of foods per day. And uh, these are the different determinants of uh, food choices. And you can see that biological determinants, these are the society signals, no? the palatability that, in, uh, that actually involve our five senses. And then the economic elements, this is actually very important. It's just because it will determine uh, how much food or how uh, the volume of food that you uh, that you have in your household and structural determinants this is actually access the roads the farm to market roads the education of the parents food variety cooking facilities skills and time and also the social characteristics of course your family belief and so on so so uh, you can uh, you can actually uh, see that uh, this is also a determinant of food choices and attitudes and beliefs and psychological determinants that's actually stress and mood. Now, if we try to look at food and nutrition security concept framework, conceptual framework, it actually involves stability, um, uh, stability in terms of availability, accessibility, utilization, and nutritional status. And uh, health, um, so health um, care scenario during this COVID-19, malnutrition will also increase due to health care failures as uh, already strained by um, strained health workers. No? Uh, strained health care systems are forced to divert resources from a range of nutritionally important functions, including antenatal care, micronutrient supplementation, and prevention and treatment of childhood diarrhea infections and acute malnutrition to, uh, toward combating uh, COVID-19. Now, um, 
With regards to food availability and security scenario during this COVID-19 pandemic, you can see here that community quarantine measures have caused serious disruption to people's access to food and other essential needs. And it breaks the food system, including supply chains, markets, and logistics have, to, uh, have led to challenges in maintaining food availability and security. However, the COVID-19 has sparked a food loss crisis. And these are actually, you can see this actually also on, in TV during the lockdown. Now, the community-based, school-based, and facility-based nutrition interventions have been disrupted and widespread donations of powdered infant formula have discouraged mothers to continue breastfeeding and quarantine restriction may also result in children consuming inadequate and unhealthy diets, which are actually low uh, in essential nutrients, high in sugar, salt, and fat. Now, uh, what are the activities to promote nutrition or vegetable intake? So FNRI, of course, promotes the uh, three basic food groups. And we have actually these kind of messages and posters. We have the nutritional guidelines. And I like to, coach, uh, to, uh, um, to uh, stress the guideline number three, wherein we say that eat more vegetables and fruits every day to get the essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber for regulation and uh, body processes. So we also have developed the Pinggang Pinoy. It's actually the Filipino version of the My Plate in the United States. And half of the plate is occupied by vegetables and fruits. And uh, we devised or we developed um, the Pinggang Pinoy by different population groups. So we have the kids, teens, adults, no? elderly, and uh, uh, the uh, pregnant and lactating women. So one way also to promote vegetables, actually FNRI has planted uh, in cooperation with the uh, East West Seed. Uh, you can see here that we have actually planted vegetables, you know? and this is uh, in partnership with uh, the um, East West Seed, partner on the Umay Gulay, so FNRI Garden. So it's actually modeling an edible garden in the workplace. So this is our garden now. And we also have different calendars, so menu calendar. So we actually distribute this to different populations or to different sectors. And uh, we have also uh, at the nutrition intervention medal in times of calamities. Uh, the, uh, we actually did gardening, nutrition education, supplementary feeding, and income generating projects in Marawi. And this was very successful. And the Marawi. Um, uh, community is actually very thankful of this project. We call this as Garden Soup Plus, IGP. And we develop also games for children just to actually, you know, encourage them to, uh, to uh, consume vegetables. And we have also the different comics. Uh. And we have uh, Facebook postings. And uh, I have told you a while ago this one, that's actually the guideline number three. And we develop uh, food products with vegetables. We have our squas canton, our canned vegetables and um, food products, not the puchero. And just lately, we launched our Nutriban. The Nutriban is actually made of squash also. And uh, this is actually promoted by our very own uh, cabinet secretary. And so in summary, uh, there is a coexistence of both under and over nutrition in, uh, um, in the country across population groups. The consumption of vegetables and fruits is low among, our, uh, among uh, Filipinos. So interrelated factors contribute to malnutrition and therefore proper intervention should be identified to prevent worst health scenarios. And the food and nutrition situation of our country as affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, and therefore, the role of food, nutrition, and healthy lifestyle is more than critical than ever at this time of pandemic to provide the body with proper nourishment and immunity. So vegetables and fruit, and fruit consumption should be a part of healthy diet, and therefore, we have to really um, be, uh, be cautious on providing availability and accessibility across all the population groups. The Pinggang Pinoy Food Guide can help Filipino families to eat the proper amount of foods in right proportions. 
And therefore, I'd like to say this, this is actually just uh, uh, quoted in Facebooks and in many other social media, the W, uh, the World Food Program who gained actually the Nobel Peace Prize 2020. So until the day we have a medical vaccine, food is the best uh, vaccine against chaos. Without it, we could see increased social unrest and protests, a rise in migration, deepening conflict and widespread undernutrition among populations that were previously immune from hunger. So with that, my dear friends, uh, I thank you so much uh, for listening to this presentation. Thank you. Over to you, Vijay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Doc Imelda. Uh, that was actually a comprehensive presentation of the current Philippine nutrition situation. And you touch on the food and uh, vegetable consumption in the Philippines. Uh, now I will ask Doc Imelda to stay with us for a while to respond to some of the questions uh, posted by our participants. Um, I think we have a good one here. And uh, the question is, based on your initial assessment, if you have already conducted one, uh, what would be the effect of this pandemic, especially on the issue of food safety, and also, of course, the price of vegetables in the overall nutrition and vegetable consumption of Filipinos? Uh, to tell you frankly, we did not yet have any. Uh, we did not yet launch any uh, uh, research on determining actually the effect of pandemic on food safety. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we mm -hmm. are now having our project submitted to our ethics committee uh, to run the rapid nutritional assessment survey uh, this month, hopefully, uh, to really assess uh, the impact of uh, the pandemic in terms of food security, their coping mechanisms, and the availment of different uh, government programs. So hopefully by end of this year, we can reveal to you what happened to our population uh, in terms of food security and uh, uh, food service, uh, nutrition, and uh, health services availment. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Doc. Okay. Uh, there's another question here. Uh, among the variables stated to be reasons for low consumption of vegetables, uh, which are the top two, and what are the concrete strategies to address these? So I think uh, the question is asking about the reasons for the why Philippine why Filipinos uh, consume vegetables less. Uh, we did, uh, the, the FNRI did not collect much uh, information on the reasons why are they not consuming. However, based on some of our literatures and some of our key uh, informant leaders' uh, opinions, they said that uh, vegetables are very expensive and also fruits. And therefore, uh, they rather buy, you know, main dish rather than buying uh, the the fruit so for vegetables uh, they said that uh, you know if uh, we eat vegetables our children will actually uh, look for a main dish that is actually you know fish or fish or meat and mm. uh, if they buy one kilo of meat this is actually just a key informant uh, uh, feedback no so if they will buy meat they said that one kilo of meat cost them 220 and that is actually already good for three days for six persons. Could you just imagine that? Oh, no. So that's a, that's, a, that's a scenario, especially in the rural area. Okay, Doc. Thank you so much for that. Um, there's another question here, but uh, I think the question would like to know about your opinion on the plant-based diet and veganism. Would you comment on that? Would you like um, to comment yes, uh, it has been uh, actually discussed all over no, globally, the plant-based diet. However, uh, this is good uh, for those who are actually having some kind of comorbidities in terms of the non-communicable diseases. However, for children who are suffering from stunting no, mm -hmm. and having undernutrition, I think having the plant-based diet is not so much uh, uh, because... Uh, they need actually uh, high, um, highly bio, uh, bioavailable protein in order for them to grow and to catch up their growth in later, you know, during adolescence because that is the, that is the second growth spurt. So uh, if we did not catch them during pregnancy and they were already born uh, stunted, 
although they will not be actually uh, the same uh, height as their normal peers, at least they will grow a little bit uh, faster uh, in order for them to catch up no, their growth potential. So uh, what, we, what we are saying is, uh, yes, uh, they, we, we can promote vegetable consumption or the planetary diet to children. However, they should be coupled with other uh, highly bioavailable uh, proteins like um, coming from animal proteins. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. Um, we have, uh, I think, last question here for, um, well, since we are a multi-stakeholder partnership platform and uh, we actually want to replicate such model in our initiatives, uh, especially with uh, uh, the presentation of you on the partnership with East to West Seed, how could other sectors help FNRI or the government in promoting uh, vegetable consumption or nutrition in the Philippines? Because uh, uh, from the poll, we have the academe and mostly NGOs and CSOs uh, who are present here in the session. So how can they help you in the initiative? Oh, oh, oh that's very good. Um, that's a very good, uh, what do you call this, um, suggestion. Yes, uh, please help us in promoting this. Uh, we have a lot of, um, of uh, IEC materials uh, trying to actually promote vegetable consumption. And also please share our postings in social media. Just go to our uh, social media account. You can see there cheap uh, recipes on vegetables and also uh, what do you call this, um, nutri uh, nutritious uh, recipes for, uh, for the different age groups. So just uh, share that and that's already actually very important for us. Thank you. Okay, Doc. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Doc Imelda, for the presentation and for responding to the some of the questions that we have here. And um, we are looking forward for a partnership with the FNRI and with the other sectors to uh, increase the vegetable consumption in the Philippines. Yes, please just email us and then we will respond to you ASAP and then uh, try to open our venue for collaboration. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Doc. Um, all right. Bye-bye. Uh, bye, bye, Doc. Thank you so much, Paul. All right, uh, before we start with the second part of this session, we want to encourage you all to ask questions. Kindly type them in the Q&A box and we'll request our other speakers to respond to them uh, during our moderated discussions. Um, at this point, uh, we will proceed with the presentations of current initiatives geared towards the promotion of vegetables and vegetable consumption in the Philippines. Uh, our speak first speaker, is Dr. Mary Ann P. Sayok, who currently serves as the Public Affairs Lead of East West Seed International. She has 20 years of professional experience in the in seed industry and was a former general manager of East West Seed Philippines. Uh, Dr. Sayok assumed different leadership positions in different associations, such as the Philippine Seed Industry Association, Asia and Pacific Seed Alliance, and International Seed Federation. Uh, prior to her stint in the private sector, uh, Doc Mary Ann had a long career in government. Uh, she actually held key positions in the Department of Agriculture as a regional director and executive director of the Agricultural Training Institute. Uh, over to you, Doc Mary Ann, for your brief presentation. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, VJ, for that uh, kind introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, PPSA and Croatia for inviting me to this uh, uh, very important uh, webinar, uh, Advancing a Healthier and Food-Wise Filipino Nation, especially during the, this time of the uh, pandemic. Um, I, I would like, uh, next please. I would like to just uh, briefly introduce to you the company I represent, East West Seed. Um, our company was founded by a Dutch seedsman, Simon Groot, and a Filipino seed trader, Benito Domingo, in Lipa, Batangas, in 1982. 
So we are now into our 38th year of serving Filipino farmers and uh, providing Filipino consumers with uh, uh, vegetables, especially the uh, lowland vegetables. One of the, uh, Isru Seed is also one of the 10 largest vegetable seed companies in the world. We export our um, varieties to 60 countries. Our mission is to increase the income of smallholder farmers through high quality seeds and knowledge and promote the growth of the tropical vegetable industry. Next, please. In um, actually, East Seed introduced the first locally developed commercial vegetable hybrid in the Philippines. That was our Jade Star uh, Bitter Gourd in 1985. We have uh, 105 varieties of vegetables in our product portfolio. Our top five crops are onion, pumpkin, tomato, bitter gourd, and corn. In uh, 2007, we set up Farm Ready. It's the first professional vegetable and flower seedling nursery in the country. Next, please. I'd also like to share with you the, the recognition that we got. Uh, we were ranked number one in the Global Access to Seed Index in 2016 and 2019 for the South and Southeast Asia Seed Index in 2019 and East Africa Seed Index in 2016. Last year, our founder, Simon Groth, was given the World Food Prize Award uh, in recognition of the work that he's done uh, in increasing the income of smallholder farmers and making vegetables available for uh, consumers. Uh, recently, we were ranked uh, number 28 in the 2020 Fortune Magazine's Change the World list. Next slide, please. Now, why vegetables? Now, this webinar is really focused on vegetables. Uh, so why vegetables? Next slide, please. Vegetables' unique contribution to development are higher productivity, nutrition, income diversification. Uh, the nutrition part was uh, well, well explained by uh, Dr. Uh, Imelda uh, a while ago. Um, and, but the higher productivity and income diversification uh, that would uh, especially relate to the smallholder farmers who are into vegetable production. So vegetables uh, rank second to ornamentals on income generated per unit area and time. Vegetables can be grown as a monocrop, intercrop, or multiple crop. So this is for crop diversification. Vegetables can be grown year round, ranging from short gestating crops to crops with longer harvesting period. If you talk about the leafies, if you plant uh, now after 25 to 30 days, you can have your, your uh, pechai or your kangkong no? to, to cook and eat. Uh, as already mentioned also by Dr. Imelda Adepa, vegetables are the best source of micronutrients, especially in vulnerable communities. Vegetables are also known as cash crops. The average income per hectare is higher compared to field crops. Next slide, please. We all at East with Seed, we believe and we promote this, uh, the, the philosophy behind having good quality seeds plus better farming practices. If you have both, then you, farmers could be assured of a higher productivity and income and also improved access to affordable vegetables. Um, Dr. Agdep mentioned that one of the reasons why uh, there is a low consumption of vegetables in the country is because um, people find vegetables expensive, especially during the off season. So if we have um, more, uh, more farmers planting vegetables, you know, and really uh, timed uh, well, then we could improve the access to affordable vegetables. And in turn, uh, we 
could provide better nutrition to the populace. Next slide, please. So what are East West Seeds initiatives to promote vegetable consumption? Next slide, please. Um, East West Seed, through our East West Seed Foundation, um, we, uh, we are engaged in uh, uh, nutrition education, uh, particularly in uh, setting up school vegetable gardens. And these vegetable gardens actually complement the school feeding program because whatever uh, vegetables are grown in the school garden. These are uh, um, included not in the in the as ingredients in the school feeding program. So you see uh, pictures here of of, of pupils and students of public uh, elementary schools um, participating in the school vegetable garden program. Next slide, please. Uh, we also uh, embarked on uh, campaigns. So we asked uh, our celebrities uh, and later on a celebrity chef to endorse no, the consumption of vegetables. So you see here, uh, this was a project made with the Oh My Gulai Foundation. So here you see Ann Curtis promoting uh, calabasa. I love calabasa. Sarah Hieronimo, be on top with camote tops. And uh, Sam Pinto uh, for ang anti-disease ang kamati. So we, uh, we um, distribute these posters or and even ask, I think the National Nutrition Council also aired this in, in, uh, some, in a t uh, their TV programs. Next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned, we also uh, uh, promote vegetable consumption by uh, having our ce celebrity chefs no? endorse uh, uh, or give us uh, creative ways of cooking vegetables. Here, we held the Pinak Bet Festival and you see here Chef Boy Logro um, sharing with us uh, his uh, Pinak Bet menu with a twist. Next slide, please. Uh, one way of promoting also uh, increased vegetable consumption is uh, through the conduct of vegetable festivals. Uh, this, uh, as you see in the photos, this is actually the Talong Festival, which is held uh, every year in Villa Cis Pangasinan. Uh, uh, eggplant, no, or Talong is the main agricultural produce of Villasis Pangasinan. And the mayor was really uh, wanted to, to highlight no, the, the, the importance of this agricultural produce. So every year they celebrate the eggplant festival. You see, they have street dancing competition with all in the theme of the Talong. And they have the Pinakbet Sakawa uh, Cook Fest, Talong Cook Fest, as you see in the picture where all 21 barangays actually participate and then they feed all those attending the, uh, the festival. Next slide, please. Uh, we, we also support uh, uh, the uh, home and community gardens, especially during this time of the uh, pandemic. Uh, we encourage local food production. So we have uh, uh, a team also from the Isua Seed Foundation and even from our knowledge transfer uh, team to help uh, households, uh, to help housewives uh, set up a container uh, gardening. And also if you have a small, uh, even backyard uh, open field gardening. Next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, I, there are other initiatives or uh, that I would like to share, but maybe that would come during the uh, question and answer or the open forum. Again, thank you for your uh, kind attention. Over to you, Vijay. Thank you so much, uh, Doc Mary Ann, for sharing with us the importance of vegetables, not, well, not only for nutrition, but also for the smallholder farmer's income. Uh, <laughs> and I... Sorry. And I would like to highlight your initiatives of, uh, in promoting vegetable consumption and nutrition in the country. I think uh, that's a lot and we have to uh, do more collaborations with you on that. Um, again, 
uh, for our participants, if you have questions for uh, Doc Mary Ann and for our next speaker, kindly type them in the Q&A box. Um, okay, uh, our next speaker uh, represents a social enterprise called Yamang Bukid Healthy Products Incorporated. Uh, Hope Alas is the Vice President of Tourism and Tourism Campaign Manager of this company. Uh, she is responsible in planning, coordinating, implementing, and overseeing various marketing and tourism campaigns for a range of products and services of the farm. Prior to her work with Yamang Bukid, she was an instructor at the Palawan State University and she earned her tourism degree in Mindanao State University. Uh, over to you, Hope. <clears throat> Hi everyone, good afternoon. So uh, again, I am Hope and uh, I'm not just representing Yamang Bukid Healthy Products Incorporated. I am based here in Palawan where Yamang Bukid Farm is located. So uh, I would like to thank everyone for the opportunity to speak and uh, share the initiatives of Yamang Bukid Farm into vegetable consumption. <clears throat> Next slide, please. <clears throat> So in Yamong Bukid, the things that we do or what are the initiatives that we do in order to encourage people to consume vegetables are uh, varied. So in Palawan actually, uh, the, or the Palawenos are not vegetable consumers. So they are more of um, meat and seafood eaters because the price of vegetables in Palawan is very uh, expensive. So uh, what we did when we started uh, the farm we started also to create a program which is Bukiders. Bukid, which, me, which is in English, farm, with the emphasis on the kids. Because um, there was a time in the farm that we served vegetables and then the kids viewed vegetables as green monsters. Like, I don't want to eat it because it's a green monster, it's yucky and the likes. So after hearing that from a kid, we created also that Bukiders program where in we immerse the kids and then teach them how the plant grows or how the vegetable grows and at the same time uh, where do the, their food came from so <clears throat> with that uh, we also conducted uh, sensory activities during their tour in the farm where they learn and understand the food that they're eating or they understand the vegetables so at the end of the tour we will be serving them ice cream with uh, infusing the flavors of vegetables. So we serve turmeric ice cream, malunggay ice cream, and all sorts of ice cream that, that has vegetable flavors. So the vegetable flavor in the ice cream is not actually, um, is not synthetic. These are really from the vegetables that we grow in the farm. And aside from that, we also, uh, we also innovated products that includes vegetables. So we have kamote tops juice and then lemongrass and then purple tea. So everyone loves juices and like the sweet taste of juices. So in that, the people would now can now consume vegetable in a form of juice. And uh, aside from that, we also have a lot of activities in the farm where in, they can really see how their, the vegetables were harvested and how they are cooked. Aside from that, they, the customers in the farm experience how to pick their own, the, the vegetables that they will be consuming. So there is this feeling that when you pick your own vegetables, you, there, is, there will be this excitement to consume it, to eat it, and then to look forward how it will be cooked. And also, um, <clears throat> we would also really uh, give credit to our uh, consultant, um, uh, she Chef Aida, a local chef here in Palawan that is really into um, creating and innovating and discovering recipes or menu that really includes vegetables. So next slide, please. <clears throat> so um, apart from that, uh, since vegetables in Palawan is really uh, is a little bit expensive, what we did is we really planted a lot of vegetables in the farm. So we don't do monocropping. We, we planted a variety of vegetables. And uh, since we are into natural farming or we don't use any synthetic product, uh, we included in that into our branding because there is this uh, 
there is this also this feeling from the consumers that I won't be eating vegetables because it has a lot of chemicals or uh, it is sprayed by pesticides that is dangerous for your health. So um, with that, that they learn that uh, the vegetables that we produce in the farm is naturally grown and doesn't have any other uh, synthetic pesticides or um, fertilizers, it also encouraged them to consume the vegetables. So what we do is uh, we deliver it to their houses or we have stores uh, and small outlets in the city wherein they can buy our vegetables. And then aside from that, uh, we also, sh while uh, when they buy vegetables from, from us, we also share recipes on how they can cook the vegetables. Because normally when we have vegetables, we have um, like the traditional way of cooking vegetables. Like if we have um, squash, okra, um, string beans. So the first thing that would come into our mind is uh, it's going to be pakpit, like the uh, Filipino traditional food and the likes. But then um, the following slides that I will be showing you are the different recipes or menu that um, Yamang Bukid Farm restaurant created and with our uh, local chef. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so um, again, this is Chef Isa. She's the one who created, uh, in, in Yamang Bukid Farm, we have a Yamang Bukid Farm restaurant. So in the farm, we serve a variety of, uh, a variety of menu that really includes vegetables, like purely vegetables without meat. So we serve um, tempura, but bukid tempura. When we say bukid tempura, these are all vegetables. We also serve, uh, we also have a section where we call it healthy booster meals, where we, where, where we serve um, vegetable lasagna. So like when we say lasagna, the first thing that would come, what, that would come into our mind is like um, meat, uh, beef, and the likes. But here what we use is um, squash and then uh, eggplant. So like the pakbet, uh, the pakbet ingredients can actually be an ingredient also in making lasagna. So next slide, please. So um, part of the initiative as well is that uh, in our restaurants, we always make sure that we serve, uh, we serve menu or we serve food that is all vegetables though aside from uh, the vegetable aside from serving vegetables we also have um, meat uh, uh, I mean ever uh, all types of meat serve along with it, with the vegetables but what we do is we cook vegetables without meat on them because normally uh, people say you cook vegetable with meat so that uh, they would uh, eat uh, the vegetable what what happens here is like people would just get meat and then they won't eat vegetables. So what we did, uh, we created three restaurants already, the Yamang Bukid Farm restaurant, the Balai Bukid restaurant, and the Yamang Dagat restaurant, where we serve uh, recipes that really includes just vegetables. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so um, aside from... Aside from the recipe, it also goes with the presentation. So when you pre when we serve vegetables, we make sure that it is presented, that the presentation is very appealing to the eyes of the consumer. Because once they are attracted to how it looks, how it's presented, the next thing that happens is the curiosity to try the food. So um, this is part. This is uh, this photo is from our one of our restaurants in Balai Bukid. Wherein we all, daily, from breakfast, lunch to dinner, we always serve um, vegetables. So uh, we have let we have a variety of lettuce. We have romaine, curly green, and other and other variety of lettuce. And we have uh, cucumber, carrots, and the likes. And what we do is we add um, different dressing. So in that alone, they will be curious and they will be like. So it's very nice. So the next thing that they will do is they will start getting and consuming it. And aside from that, uh, we also uh, make this connection with uh, 
our with the consumers and the farmers uh, we let the consumers some of those who visited the farm already what they do is they immerse with our farmers they talk to them and then learn from the farmers that it's very hard to produce uh, food so in turn they will value food especially vegetables so uh, and then at the same time really put heart into baking or or and cooking the food that we serve to our customers. So next slide, please. <clears throat> so uh, earlier, I was talking about vegetable lasagna. So um, the photo that you can see is actually an example of a vegetable lasagna. So it doesn't have any meat. So what's there is um, instead of using beef for lasagna, the meat that we use there is actually um, eggplant. So eggplant is the substitute of the beef and then the sauce is um, squash and uh, milk. So like when, when we had it tried by different uh, customers who are not really, who doesn't really eat vegetables, they were so surprised that, oh, it doesn't have meat and it's all vegetables. So that alone uh, encouraged them to try and eat uh, vegetable or consume vegetables. So again, it goes as well with the presentation of, uh, it goes to, as well with the presentation of the food. So anything that's appealing to the eye, the next thing that will follow, they will consume it out of curiosity. And then when they tried it, they will, they will look forward to eating more. Next slide, please. So, um, these are other foods that we serve. So, uh, we have talong and okra, and uh, we have um, the fresh lumpia. And as you can see, there's a waffle here. So, kids and like almost everyone loves waffle, but our waffle is different. So, our waffle has different flavors. So, they're not, I mean, the flavorings in our waffles are not just flavorings they're actually the main ingredients so we serve uh, squash um, waffles we have malungay waffles and uh, even um, like pet shy waffles so anything that is available in the farm we really try to create new recipes for uh, that will make sure that our consumer will our customers will can really eat vegetables because um, in Yamam Bukid, we, ad we do not just ad ad advocate on farming, but we also advocate on a healthy lifestyle. So that's why we have uh, healthy booster meals. Aside from that, um, <clears throat> like when we have vegetables, the, the first thing that we always have in mind is uh, we only have a few recipes or ideas on how how to cook it. So um, from time to time, we conduct uh, experiments and innovation on how we can cook it. So from during the quarantine period, uh, Chef Isa created uh, vegetable fritters. So and then with different dip and the uh, dip. And what happened is that when people would taste it, they would really think that it's meat, but actually it's just purely vegetable. So um, and then. Uh, we also have um, the, yeah, the bouquet, the, the, buke, the tempurang bouquet, the fritters, and uh, stir fry. So what happens here is that in our restaurants, because uh, we have uh, two restaurants that the service is buffet, we were so amused that there are more and more people consuming vegetables. So it's not just that they, they get the vegetable because there's meat, but they really consume vegetable even if the, it doesn't have meat. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so aside from that as well, we also have a program, which is the plant plant um, advocacy. So we, uh, during the, actually during the quarantine period, we, ha we campaign that people plant in their backyard so that um, they will have uh, so that they can just harvest their own food and at the same time they don't have to really spend a lot going to the market and buy vegetables so uh, in that alone that also created an impact um, to the consumer because when 
when you plant your own food or like there is this feeling that when you plant your own food you get to be excited like you watch it grow you you took care of it and then after that if it's harvest time already you will be thinking a lot of recipes that you can do to cook the vegetables so um that also uh that um campaign also resulted to people consuming vegetables because again uh in palawan people here are not really consumers of vegetables so uh they are more into meat and seafoods so uh, and then aside from that we also give out seedlings and seeds to different communities and encourage um them to plant grow their food and at the same time give them recipes on what they can do and how or on how they can cook the the vegetables not just the typical like um there is this idea that when you say vegetables oh what i can do is uh adobo uh i i just have adobo sitaw i just have pakbet and the likes but then again uh with the recipes that we share to the customers or the consumer they will now have an idea on how they can cook the vegetable and that in turn encourage them to consume vegetables next slide please <clears throat> so uh that would be my presentation those are the initiatives of yamang bukid farm uh, in make in encouraging consumers and customers to eat vegetables so let's all eat healthy and stay, stay healthy and be happy thank you uh, thank you so much hope for uh, sharing your initiatives in palawan and well i assume in other also in other areas in the philippines i think agritourism as is becoming more and more popular nowadays especially more people are into traveling and eating uh, now yeah. we will, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hope. Uh, now we will now move to the moderated discussion. May I invite our speakers to respond to some of the questions posted by our uh, webinar uh, participants? Okay. Um, the first question is, I think, um, addressed to uh, Doc Mary Ann from Anton Palo of FAC. Uh, increasing supply of vegetables should bring down costs leading to affordable vegetables and supposedly higher consumption. But how do we reconcile increasing supply of vegetables with a much publicized dumping of vegetables? Yeah, thank you, Anton, for that question. Indeed, I think the, uh, the, the recent dumping of vegetables uh, happened during the, uh, the height of the lockdown, the, the, the first lockdown because of the pandemic. And as we all know, there were uh, disruptions in the whole uh, food supply chain. Uh, so the, uh, there were not enough um, transportation, no? So trucks, delivery trucks, and people were restricted actually uh, from, uh, from going out and, and doing their uh, routine. So uh, I think that that was the reason why the, the farmer just, you know, chose to just put the vegetables uh, uh, along the road, no? So if people could, uh, could well, passing by can just uh, help themselves with, but it's really mainly because of the disruptions in, uh, in uh, the whole um, uh, logistics uh, chain. Mm -hmm. um, Doc Mary, uh, is there an imbalance between the supply and demand giving that uh there are, for example, we see tomatoes uh, being dumped because of the pr the price is too low, and um, is there yeah. an e was there an effect uh, on supply and demand on based on your um, based on the industry outlook? Of uh -huh. Normally, yeah, normally um, that happens, especially with tomatoes during the summer season during the uh because during summer no that, that that's uh, when uh planting of vegetables you know or the harvest of vegetables occur so when there is too much harvest then uh, there, you can say that there is an oversupply uh so sometimes 
farmers mm -hmm. just you know don't um, leave the the tomato plants uh, instead of hiring workers to harvest but mm -hmm. uh, uh, be, because uh, well, that it's a reality that uh, growing vegetables in the Philippines is seasonal because mm -hmm. of you know we have the wet and the dry season. But during the the wet season, when the supply is low, then um, and then the demand uh, remains. Then that's where the imbalance is. That's why in uh, like uh, our company, we develop uh, vegetable varieties that. Uh, will be good for our all season production. Mm -hmm. So they could uh, also teaching the farmers mm -hmm. uh, technologies that will help them grow vegetables even during the off season or the rainy season. Mm -hmm. Okay, Doc, thank you, thank you so much for that uh, response. Uh, now I'm, I'm, I will go to uh, Hope for, to answer the question. Uh, Department of Agriculture is promoting uh, Promoting urban agriculture. I'm sorry. It's promoting urban agriculture, but uh, that are mostly uh, promoting uh, vegetables uh, planting at home. And what would be the effect of this uh, kind of uh, 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 initiatives in in social in enterprises like Yamang Yubuki? <clears throat> so, um, what we do in Yamang Bukid, we actually support the uh, advocacy or the campaign of the uh, Department of Agriculture to do okay. urban gardening or urban agriculture at their, um, in, in the household so that they can produce their own food. So, uh, yes, there is a little impact because we will be losing some of our uh, customers or regular buyers because they already have uh, their own food at home or they already have their own vegetables at home. But uh, what we do in Yamang Bukid is we look for other markets. So we supply restaurants and hotels. But uh, though right now in this time of in this time, like hotels are not operating and there are a few restaurants operating. So what happens what happens to our um, harvest is that 90% of them were are already consumed by our restaurants because we have three restaurants and are all fully operational. So, and uh, one thing as well is that if the vegetables, uh, if like, if it will really, if it has an impact on the vegetable farmers, what we, what we do is that we can also innovate or um, think of other uh, products that we can use the vegetables. Actually, one example is here in Palawan, there was a time that uh, the string beans, uh, the regular price is actually 10 pesos. And then it came to the point that it's already sold for 2 pesos because every household already has their own uh, string beans because that's the easiest to grow. So with it in Yama, we have like around 100 kilos of um, harvest. So what we did is we make we pickled the string beans and we were still able to sell it with a higher price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, VJ, if I may add to what uh, Hope said, I think uh, uh, more than uh, more than food security, urban agriculture also uh, contributes no, to, 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 to other, uh, uh, for example, uh, especially during this pandemic, it provides a good uh, pastime no? for those otherwise uh, people who couldn't leave their, their houses. So it, it makes them, uh, it contributes to their sanity if they keep themselves busy and, uh, and um, producing their own food. And also, of course, uh, because of this, the problem in the supply chain and the logistics, then they, they could uh, have a, enjoy uh, their vegetables. And also at the same time, uh, it contributes to the aesthetic, no? the, the uh, aesthetic aspect no? For in, 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 in the city. So uh, it's not purely, let's not look at urban agri agriculture purely from the food security uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Doc Marianne, and hope for answering, uh, for responding to that question on urban agriculture. Uh, there is uh, one question here that 
uh, directed to you both. Um, what is your opinion in the use of GMO seeds in vegetable farming? Uh, does consumption of GMO vegetables have adverse effects on the body? Um, may, I, may I take a first shot Third on up. that? Yeah. Um, in, the, in the Philippines, uh, there, I think the, there is uh, one vegetable, but it's not yet commercialized. Uh, the, 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 there is the BT eggplant. No? Uh, the, the, this was developed because of the problem, the huge problem with uh, the fruit, at fruit and shoot borer. So to combat this, uh, this pest uh, affecting uh, eggplant, uh, they developed the, the BT eggplant, but it's not yet uh, uh, commercialized uh, in the Philippines. But other countries are already are actually um, using non this uh, G, uh, GMO seeds. Uh, on the adverse effect of uh, of GM vegetables on the body, there has been no uh, uh, concrete studies or uh, research findings uh, uh, to this, you know, uh, confirming that there is a, an adverse effect. So uh, I think we should really look at it from the of uh, science-based uh, mm -hmm. approach. Okay, thanks, Doc. Uh, Hope, do you would you want to add to that? Um, to respond to the question. Um, so, just like uh, what I mentioned earlier, that there are really the the other really consumers who doesn't um, consume vegetables because mm -hmm. under gym GMO and then they are they are they have the synthetic fertilizers and the like so mm -hmm. uh what we do in the farm we don't uh plant uh gmo so what we plant are OP, opv uh seeds so because we're into natural farming so just to be safe for uh like because we're also looking forward into being accredited as an organic farm mm -hmm. okay uh thank you uh there is this one question here, but uh, I think uh, Doc Mary Ann answered it already. But uh, for the benefit of the other participants, uh, the question was, can the seeds from the vegetables that were planted using Iswed seeds still ger germinate? Doc Mary Ann? Yeah, uh, they will. No, they will, uh, especially the OPB. But uh, um, the expect that the performance of the crop will not be the same no as when you use the f1 so the f2 if you use the f2 seeds second mm -hmm. generation uh of course the 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 performance will be um will not be the same and i uh, i would just like to to comment on what hope said no uh you you do um according to the even the organic agriculture law, no? it doesn't uh, pro prohibit uh, those into organic farming, organic certification to use hybrid seeds. So I think we can use both OPV and hybrid seeds even in the natural farming system or in the organic uh, agriculture production. Mm. Uh, thanks, Thank Doc. You. For, yeah, thanks, Doc. Uh, I think one last question for Hope. Um, what is the general uh, effect of the pandemic given that uh, well in a way you are um, depending on the tourists that are uh, coming in Palawan uh, to the what's the effect of the pandemic to your to the Yamang Bukid especially uh, that Palawan is uh, is dependent on much on tourism um, yes, Palawan is really a tourism-dependent uh, province. But uh, what happens with Yamang Bukid is before we penetrated the domestic uh, tourist and the international tourist, we build up our um, connection or brand recognition with the local tourists. So um, even now, uh, actually last year we were able to generate 254,000 tourists in in just in just 2019 so roughly we have 10,000 uh, tourists per week but right now we still have a lot of tourists visiting the farms because most of the tourists that we were able to capture are just from Palawan mm -hmm. and aside from that we do not d depend alone on 
the tourists to visit our farm. So what we do is uh, we shifted as well into other forms wherein we can really reach out to them. So we have delivery services. We also set up um, restaurants and stores already in the city wherein we can be nearer to our market. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Hope. And uh, thank, thanks uh, both speakers for uh, answering uh, uh, to the questions of our participants. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, please allow me to um, to summarize the discussions uh, shared by all of our, of our participants. So there was a mention on the um, possibility of um, having the initiatives at the municipal level, also shared by Mr. Acosta in the chat box, um, because uh, it, it is said that maybe we, we can try uh, the approach of through the municipal level or local level um, instead of um, with parallel efforts from the national level. So number two is on uh, building the capacities of the farmers. Um, that would be um, maybe on fair trade, on logistics, accessibility, or market linkage. And then um, on the wider um, discussions, we can also initiate discussions on uh, food system or the food system approach. And then um, in terms of technology, technology and innovation and other practices, we heard some um, good um, practices from our participants here. Maybe we can also conduct through the PPSA Vegetable Working Group another session of sharing of practices so we can further learn from each other. And um, that also the last one is on in terms of the ongoing projects of the government. Uh, maybe we can continue the discussions after and then um, see how we can better um, collaborate and also coordinate with various government agencies such as DepEd and the OST and including FNRI um, to further the initiatives and uh, develop more um, activities for for this um, increasing the vegetable consumption and of course production in the Philippines. Um, over to you, um, BJ, to close the session, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that, Ami. Uh, again, we would like to thank our speakers for your valuable insights and sharing. Uh, we hope to stay in touch and continue our discussions and hopefully collaboration out of this um, uh, Zoom session. Uh, we would also like to thank our participants for their questions and active participation today. Um, should, should you need to reach out to our speakers, we will be releasing uh, a full report on this and uh, that includes their uh, email addresses and um, the present their presentations. Uh, lastly, before we close, we would like to invite you to the succeeding uh, sessions of this uh, PPSA Working Groups Learning Series. So we have this uh, session on the, the second part of the Advancing a Healthier and Foodwise Filipino Nation, uh, which is uh, focus on food safety naman. So uh, the event will happen on October 20. So uh, there is a QR code that you can scan or uh, we will send the, uh, the registration link to all uh, in the in the days to come and also we have this on the side the all other succeeding uh, sessions that we have on corn coffee fruits um, agribusiness agri-financing and digital so again uh thank you very much and we hope to see you all in our next webinar